Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. We're going to finish off our reward cards. Part three of the reward card analysis. These are the new 21 reward cards that launched today, September 13th, and they are awesome. And we've done two videos uh, covering about five or six of them in each video. And we did that so that they'd be bite sized. This one will finish it off. And I'm going to, I'm going to give like a round three of my favorite. I gave from each of those videos, I picked a favorite. This one, we're going to do another one where we pick our favorite. And when we think about favorites, we're not just, uh, you know, which one looks cool. We're like, I'm trying to make a good educated guess about how these cards will fit within the new defined meta as the game evolves. Which of these are going to be particularly powerful and give you an opportunity to maximize your return for new cards that you might be buying or renting. Um, because if you get in early on a card, it'll have an opportunity to appreciate as people discover it. So let's try and discover it now by looking at the new cards and, and understanding how they could fit in into a winning team, into the future meta of this game. And if that sounds interesting, guys, my name is Dwayne. I go by Infidel1258 and I cover Splinterlands all day, every day. Stay tuned, stick around, like, and subscribe. Okay, so try and move quicker. So I want to get the rest of them. I'm not sure how many are left, but there, there must be something like, there might even be 10 left. So let's try and be real quick. We covered Lava Lunge, we covered Uraeus. That was my first favorite. J Jinchala looks great. Um, Renova is amazing, but maybe a bit expensive so far. Bonesmith looks cool, but maybe is a little bit overrated for you know, the mana cost for the two magic. Oh, Pelicor, we've seen this before. The art, I don't know if we saw, wow, eight hit points. I don't know if we saw the details yet. I was thinking this would be a small opportunity monster. It's not opportunity. Just from the artwork, I thought to myself, sneak attack or opportunity. And I'm finding that I was wrong. Three melee is good um, for a five mana cost monster. Five speed is great with flight, it's even better. Then you've got the the hit points that are pretty significant for you know this card for that five mana, mana cost. Backfire is that new ability that will cause uh, monsters who miss you to take two damage, which I love. And Retaliate is always awesome. Very interesting card. Don't know. I love it for the mana cost. Like I feel really strongly this is an awesome card for five mana. I don't know if this was like if this is going to be my main tank, but I love that it's a cheap uh, tank. I like that card a lot. Let's go. Cool. Mm. Smith, yeah, we looked at you. Mm. Wave Smith, we looked at you. Crystal Smith, we looked at you. This is my second favorite new one. Love this card for the cost. Great card. Dragon yeah. makes it compatible with all of your splinters that's great hmm twilight basilisk i love the artwork let's check this out see how these prices have dropped even from this morning these were like hundreds of dollars i mean people were just throwing numbers at out there to see what they could get but at two dollars and 33 cents we're starting to be reasonable here you know you need 115 of this to make it max copy so i still think that's quite high but these prices are going to continue to fall i mean look at look at the page here 390 389 384 335 290 271 everybody's undercutting the last guy and they don't even know where the bottom is no one does but we're going to find it that's what free markets do we're going to find buyers and sellers will meet in the middle somewhere hang on a second So let's see the details on this guy here. What do we got? Three melee damage, four speed, two armor, five hearts. Stun. Stun is so powerful, guys. This is really, this is an important ability, especially at a four cost mana monster. That's really interesting. Mind you, he's only got reach. He doesn't have opportunity or sneak, which is going to mean that you got to play him in the first or second position. Unless, of course, the rule set allows mon melee monsters to attack from third, fourth, fifth, any position. But I still like this a lot, especially for the four mana, because you know you can play him in little leagues, and that's a, a one of the rule sets that makes you play four, four cost mana monsters or less. So this is a powerful card for that lower level mana battle. 
particularly because of the stun. The rest of its abilities are really just kind of, I would say, mediocre. But that is interesting because you know how effective stun can be. You're, you're counseling your um, opponent's self-heal or whatever the case may be. And sometimes you get knockout monsters. And if you hit, if you stun and then you, you hit with a knockout, it's double the damage. So this can be very powerful. Now, I'm not... It's still not up there with the assassin that I looked at or the Uraeus. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking for number my third favorite. It's a good card though. I like it a lot. Seedsmith. That's very cool artwork. I like that, man. I like this a lot. These Venari, they seem to be like a, a, a different race of people. There are Splinterlands people. They're all rats or something like that. I like that. Can't wait for this lore to be flushed out. Let's let's look at his, his stats. So at higher levels, you got the form archery damage. That's great. Remember, that's going to allow it to stay under the force shield. You don't want to get five and then hit a force field and then drop down to one. Poison is always appreciated. Scavenge is amazing. One of my favorite abilities just because, you know, four turns into ten so easily. You know what I mean? Like you just you just grow and grow and grow plus scavenge can allow you to fight against your own negative status effects like if, if your character gets poisoned or if your character has you know if it's an earthquake match he's not he's going to be damaged every round but then scavenge is going to allow him to sustain himself a little longer very powerful good card again i don't know yeah cool let's keep looking i don't think that's going to be meta redefining let's put it that way Okay, exploding rats. What's the deal here? Four melee at the highest level, seven speed, one hit point. It's like the dwarf all over again. The blast damage, the redemption. I love redemption. It's so fun when you die and then you just take somebody with you. I don't know if you guys ever played Star Control. It's an old video game for computer and they later launched it on the Panasonic 3D, real 3DO. Um, it was also on Sega Genesis. It was an amazing game where it was like you would explore space and you would um, uh, you would explore space and you would uh, mine planets and you would meet other alien races. One of the things that I always loved about the game was there's a race called of rats or there are marsupials or something, and they would they, their whole thing was that they were they were not very scientifically advanced, but they met another alien race that gave them ships, and they had these basic little vessels that would fly through space and they'd go directly at the enemy and then blow up. And uh, they were super weak, but it was so much fun to just bob and weave because they were super agile. And you'd make your way in there, and then you just blow up on the enemy. And and I remember having so many la laughing at my good buddies who you know they'd lose to me when I had that ship and. It makes me think about this guy or this exploding dwarf also. True Strike. True Strike seems not super valuable in this context because his speed is going to be so much that he's going to probably hit every round anyways. Still, it's cool. This is fun though. Redemption and Blast. I like this card. That's going to be one I'm going to want for sure. It's like the new exploding dwarf. You know? I like it. Mm, what are we doing for speed for time? We're at nine minutes. Let's keep going. I really want to get through all of the rest of them today, right now. Could we? Yeah, we talked about Pelicor. Good card. Maybe a new first tank. Really, no shield or anything like that on that Pelicor, but still, good card. Good card. Pelicor Bandit. We touched on briefly in the first video. Looks like a good, good sneak monster. I'm gonna want one. I don't remember what, what his full stats were. Four attack. Yeah, I'm going to need this maxed out. Six speed, the flight. This might be another one. This might be the video's favorite here, even though I already talked about it before. Five hit points, three mana, four melee, the crazy speed. And again, sneak attack is so powerful. You need to have those sneak attack options moving into the new modern format. You don't want to just be relying on your old um, skeleton assassin or you know there's the beta cards and the alpha cards that we've we've grown accustomed to using but we're going to need new options because in the modern format those are no longer going to be available 
So Pelicor is a must-have, in my opinion, if you play with the Blue Splinter. You haven't looked at this guy, Pelicor Mercenary. Looks like a, he's got like potions on there or something. Let's see. Now look at this. We're starting to get into like some interesting, well, mind you, you need 400 copies. You're going to pay 400 bucks to max this guy out? I don't think so. Let's see. Three melee, four speed, one armor, 11 hit points, retaliate, self-heal, blank. Interesting. The retaliate, he's got quite a low melee damage for me to be really pumped about it. And he doesn't have any shield or void or anything. So I don't like when my tanks lack those abilities. I really like either shield or void uh, on my, my tanks. But it's it, this is interesting. Again, I don't, not super pumped about that one. In the first two videos, I was definitively in love with a couple of those monsters. 69 cents, guys, they're getting cheaper. Gargoya Lion, let's see what your deal is. So all the way up at the top, you got three melee damage, three speed, three armor, seven hearts, flight, void, and rage. Now, this is interesting. Hang on, let me think about this. Three attack turns in rage into probably five. And then you've got the flight and the void and a lot, you know, Kind of a slow three speed though. This is going to be helpful in earthquake battles. This is going to be helpful in low mana battles. This is going to be helpful if you can throw some inspire on the team. Like how about, um, what's that one called? Shadowy Presence in the background, giving him four melee, turning it into I think six. That's interesting for six man, man, mana cost. Again, I'm not prepared to say that's my favorite. So far, I'm really leaning on... The, I'm on the fence, but I'm leaning towards Pelicor Bandit as my third favorite here. Minari Heatsmith. Oh, and this one, we saw the JPEG of that. Or the GIF of it, where he's kind of like rubbing his hands sneakily. Steel. Look at this, 52 cents. They're getting cheaper. Weight armor, which I love. Thorns, which is obviously classic. And lastly, increase magic reflect, return fire, and thorns damage to all enemy monsters. Okay. Hang on a second. Amplify. We're, this was the ability I thought was going to be on a summoner. Let's see how it would play here. Increase magic reflect, return fire, and thorns damage to all enemy monsters by one. Now, do you think... Is this a negative status buff? I think it, it is. It's a negative status effect. So when he's in the room, he's going to make the enemy team take one more of each of those, regardless of whether they are contacting this monster. Is that how you're reading that? Let me know in the comments below. I think this is going to negatively status buff, nerf your whole enemy team, regardless of whether they have any contact with this with this monster. Yeah, really interesting. Who would you put this with? I mean, this amplifies so it seems like it'd be really valuable. So right now, I feel like I don't fully understand how this card is going to fit into meta, but I think it's going to be very important. I haven't even fully thought of all the synergies there. But I like what I'm seeing with the hearts and hit points, the mana cost, and the abilities. I really like what I'm seeing. If nothing else, people who hit him are going to take three thorn damage, right? That's huge. Super cool. How great would this guy be if your summoner gave force field? How cool would that be? Imagine somebody comes slugging this guy with like Sandworm hits him for seven with Pierce, but it only does one damage because your summoner is giving force field while he's throwing three thorn damage back at your at whoever hit him. Super interesting. Or even with ouster, hey? How about you, you if you had an ouster type summoner on the red team uh, and he's got void armor, but he's going to be reflecting back because of the ouster ability and then he's going to be um, amplifying that. Interesting. 
I like this card. This is a card I'm going to need to get. I'm always super interested in the new abilities because you don't fully, maybe you don't always fully understand how they're going to be utilized to maximum effect. And, and, and then they can just be these sometimes game breaking synergies. Okay. Pelicor Conjurer, two mana, which I love to see. Eight hearts, eight for two mana and five speed with flight and magic reflect and divine shit. Wow. For two mana, this is a great card. This this is like um, this makes me think of failed summoner on the on the Earth Splinter or um, there's a blue monster with two mana cost that has eight hit points. Also, it has cleanse, but this is a very good card. Very good. This is a must have just from a meat shield perspective in a low mana match. Plus it's common. So it's going to be playable in all games. I think you've, you've got two extra mana and you just want to give yourself a little bit more snipe protection or sneak protection, or, you know, you need a cheap um, monster at the front end for tanking. This is it, man. Eight hit points with the magic reflect and the divine shield and phase with the flight and the speed. He's going to dodge magic. Wow. This is, this is currently got to have it. I mean, I'm going to want all these cards, but that's the favorite so far. That's, that's the favorite so far. Is that it? That's it, I think. I'm pretty sure we went through all of them. And Pelicor, Conjurer, is my new favorite. Yeah. Wow. Okay, guys. So that's all the new reward cards, at least all the ones that have been currently listed in Splinterlands. I guess it's possible that some haven't currently been listed in the... And they will yet be listed. There's no new summoners listed. That's good. I'm going to go over to Peak Monster just to make sure I haven't ex excluded somebody. Here we go. Rewards, regular. Refresh it. Peakmonsters.com. Click on buy. For to load. Come on now. Click on rewards. Regular. So far, Pelicor Conjurer. But the second being Pelicor Bandit, for sure. What do you guys think? What are your favorites from this video and just from the from the new cards in general? I'd love to see your comments below on that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thanks guys for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.